Alright, so Hex, a game of Hexapon. The game of Hexapon and a method to learn a strategy for playing the game was described in Mathematical Games in the March 1962 issue of Scientific American. The method described in the article was for a hypothetical learning machine composed of matchboxes and colored beads. This has been generalized in the program Hex. The program learns by elimination of bad moves. All positions encountered by the program and acceptable moves from them are stored in the array P $I. When the program encounters an unfamiliar position, the position and all legal moves from it are added to the list. If the program loses a game, it erases the move that led to defeat. So that's kind of cool. It's like, you know, we've seen this a couple times before where the game sort of learns what to do and not to do the more times you play it. So maybe the first time we play this will be obviously easier if the game is starting out sort of from scratch without any um, inherent AI. If it hits a position from which all moves have been deleted, they are led to defeat. It erases the move that got it there and resigns. Oh well. Eventually the program learns to play extremely well and indeed is unbeatable. The learning strategy could be adapted to other simple games with a finite number of moves like tic-tac-toe, small board checkers, or other chess-based games. For complete playing directions, respond yes or why to the question instructions. And Hex was written in Basic Plus for the digital RSTS-11 and RSTS-E systems. Hex uses string functions and concatenation extensively. Also, the symbol semicolon equals rem and oh, and equals print. Okay. Yeah, the program author was Jeff Dalton from Northfield Mount Hermon School in Northfield, Massachusetts. Oh, we should move this over a bit. Okay, so Hexapon, the interpretation of a Hexapon game, as presented in Martin Gardner's The Unexpected Hanging and Other Mathematical Diversions, Chapter 8, A Matchbox Game Learning Machine. Instructions by Jeff Dalton, conversion to MITS Basic by Steve North. Yeah, let's see. So we still don't really know how to play this. Still don't because the, um, <laughs> the instructions scrolled off the screen here. So I'm gonna have to open up the source code to read them. Okay, um, hexapon is played with chess pawns on a three by three board. Uh oh. If that if that's the case, they may have already messed up the board here. The format of the board, I mean. The pawns are moved as in chess, one space forward to an empty space, or one space forward and diagonally to capture an opposing man. On the board, your pawns are zero, the computer, or O. Oh, uh, the computer pawns are X, and empty squares are periods. Ten are moved, type the number of the square you are moving from, followed by the number of the square you will move to. The numbers must be separated by a comma. The game starts a series of games knowing only when and how to move. It has no strategy at first and just moves randomly. However, it learns from each game. Thus, winning becomes more and more difficult. Also, to help offset your initial advantage, you will not be told how to win the game, but must learn this by playing. Wow, okay. That's, that's neat. Is this the first text-based game? No, uh, Switchy, we've played many of them so far. This, uh, this is actually a book of 101 text-based uh, games, basically. But it is, yeah, it's from 1973, but I guess the first text-based games were, what, in the 60s, primarily? The numbering of the board is as follows. Okay, and then we see it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. For example, to move your rightmost pawn forward, you would type 9, comma, 6. In response to the question, you are move. I see. So that would basically, yeah, you'd be starting at nine, and then you move to six. So nine comma six. Since time is a good sport, you'll always go first. Well, they kind of mangled the um, the board here is sort of mangled 
the layout. So really that's one, two, three going, it's all in a row. They, they didn't break this up well. And I'm even looking now in the sample runs, it's not supposed to show up that way. So we're gonna have to, <laughs> we're gonna have to use a little bit of our imaginations to sort of change this format. So this X is one, the second X is two, that's three. These dots are four, five, six. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on, Sprint. They're adding line breaks after every piece instead of after every three. All right, so we don't even know what the win condition is here yet. We have to find out how to win the game by playing. I mean, I would guess we have to get maybe our... Either we have to capture all three of the other pieces of the X's, or maybe we have to get to the other side of the board somehow. So... Let's just try 9-6, see what happens. We're, gonna, we're also gonna have to learn by playing. All right, he moves from two to six. So he captured our piece, got it. Because he moved, yeah, X. So I should be able to move my piece to six and capture him, I would think. Yes. You can't move, so I win? What? I've won one and you have won zero. We already lost? So wait a minute, let's take a look at the board here. I think it scrolled and we missed what happened. So I did capture his piece here. I see, and then he moved. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait a minute, oh, we're missing um, the first one. That must have been a period there. So he must have moved from one to five. I see, yeah, and then we couldn't have moved our last piece. So it looks like the object of the game is to still have a legal move remaining. Yeah. So rather than capture all the pieces, maybe it's just have an extra move to go. So, interesting. Alright, this time let's, let's try moving 8 to 5 in the middle of the board. Alright, he moves from 1 to 5, so he captured a piece. So we could capture him, he'll capture back us, we'll have one piece remaining, we'll take him, then he'll take us more. Well, maybe not. Let's just experiment. Let's capture him. You can't move again, so I win? Damn it! Okay. So maybe capturing the other pieces is not necessarily the best strategy here. So I'm, again, I'm just trying to format this into my head. Um, so we still have the piece there at 9, then how did he move? Did he capture us? No, he didn't, I see. So he moved here to 6. Got it. Alright, so I don't think we want to necessarily um, worry about capturing pieces. We just want open moves. Okay, so let's move to the center of the board again. Okay, he moves from one to four. Which means we still have six to m six open to us. So let's go nine to six. But then we're gonna have seven to worry about. Seven can't move at the moment. All right. I think that's the only piece we can move. Actually, I could capture him, hang on. This is piece five, which means I should be able to capture piece three. Let's try that. Can we move backwards? I don't even know. We might be able to move backwards. Mog returns. Thank you for the host. Let's try capturing him on space three, see what happens. You win! All right, there it is. Yeah, so uh, not sure exactly how we did that, but the games do appear to be pretty short. Uh, only a few moves from each side, one or two, and that can be a game. Which, come to think of it, you might expect for uh, a board that only has nine spaces. Um, so it seems like the object of the game is just to prevent, the, you know, have, cause the other side not to be able to win. Or yeah, that's true, Sprint. Yeah, you could win just by getting the other side, but... Huh. Interesting. 
So I'm sure if we played that more, we could get more interesting uh, strategies going. Learn the game a bit better.